If you have an underflow heating at home with a traditional analog room thermostat and you're considering to replace it with a Taro smart thermostat, this video is for you. Especially if you have a room thermostat which is integrated in the frame of a light switch, you might be wondering if Taro nicely fits in here. And in this video, I'll show you how I made my setup work and how I configured everything. The Tato Smart Thermostat is great at controlling underflow heatings. It's however not optimized to be mounted on a frame of a standard light switch. So if you would just mount it with the, with the regular holes that you see here on the, on the back plate of the device, it would basically sit somewhere centered here and overlap parts of the, of the light switch on top. Uh, so I did some minor tweaks here on my setup to make sure that it actually nicely sits on the frame. And in this video, I'll show you how. To control an underflow heating, you'll need a wired smart thermostat from Tado. The packaging includes a welcome guide, the thermostat itself, there's some mounting material, some stickers for the, for the wires, and also screws to mount it. And then, since this is a starter kit, it will also include the Tado internet bridge and the necessary cables to bring the whole Tado setup online. I already have a Tado internet bridge installed in my home, so I will skip that part in this video. You will see in the welcome guide that Tado offers step-by-step -step installation instructions via the Tado app, so we will continue from there. In the app, I'll go to settings, rooms and devices, and add a device. I will allow Taro to use my camera to do the QR code scanning and I'll proceed with registering the device. So now it tells me how to power the device, pair the device. We'll wait until the device is paired. Okay, already worked. So now the smart thermostat is connected and we can go to see the step-by-step -step installation instructions from this button here. Okay, so it's asking me which room thermostat I want to replace. I can select a room thermostat here and I know that the one that I want to replace is from Berker. That one here. Yes, my system is water based. Confirm model selection. Okay, and now I can get detailed instructions for that. The app gives a heads up on which tools will be needed. So then before starting the installation, we'll have to switch off our mains power to ensure that there's no power on the wires. I already did that. We'll get some instructions on how to take off the analog room thermostat.
and it suggests to take some pictures of the wiring setup so to make sure helpful if you want to revert to the previous setup for example if you're living in a rental apartment and need to move out then we'll prepare some stickers so that will basically help us with the correct wiring and also helpful if you want to revert to the previous setup you get some instructions on how to label the stickers okay then we'll attach the labels correctly and we'll take the wires off. The flush mount box inside the wall includes two holes. You see them here on the sides, which have a standard distance of six centimeters. They are the holes that we then want to also use to, to mount the device. The holes in the back plate of the title device they use exactly the same distance, so also six centimeters. The challenge is, however, that if we would use those, the device would sit too far up and would basically cover part of the light switch. So that's why we'll do some tweaking here. As I said, we will want to use those two holes in the end. You'll see that if you put the light switch on top or the frame of the light switch, it will cover those holes. So that means there will be some drilling needed on this part as well. I mark the drilling holes with a six centimeter distance. For mounting the device, I bought screws which are 3.5 millimeter wide and 30 millimeter long. So I'm using a four millimeter drill. screws need to go completely flush into the plastic otherwise the head of the screw would collide with the with the other part of the device and it wouldn't close properly so that's why I'm using now a bit bigger drill to um, yeah, create the necessary hole so for this I'm using a six millimeter stone drill Screw sits nicely flush in the plastic and the device can close properly. I also drilled the necessary holes on the bottom part of the of the frame. See also from the back. So they nicely match the thermostat. Now we bring back the frame with the freshly drilled holes. the title back plate which now nicely sits on top of the frame The app shows some detailed instructions on how to put the wires correctly into the right terminals.
close the wiring box. Then we snap on the device and we're done. To complete the installation we are switching on the mains power again. That was actually pretty easy. So now we can go and rename the room. It automatically calls it room 4 so now we are renaming this to bedroom. Then let's check it on the home screen. Okay, so there's the bedroom now here. There's a separate tile for it. I can open it up. I'll see the inside temperature and also humidity. It shows me my current set point, which I can change here manually. Let's go back to the schedule. There is actually a default schedule already set up. We can open it here from the top. So you'll see basically at the moment it's heating between 7 and uh, 10 o'clock in the evening to 20 degrees. So that's the default setting. Let's actually go down a bit. I don't want to heat the bedroom too much. I'm also fine if it starts, if it stops heating earlier at around 8 o'clock. It anyways um, takes some time until it cools down due to the underflow heating setup and at night we can even go down to 17 degrees. All right, the away setting is set to 15, that should be fine. And let's go to balance to ensure that it already heats up before we arrive back home. Alright, and we are good to go.